Uh, next we have Representative John Fry from Ridgefield. He is, uh, he serves on, the, he's a ranking member on the Aging Committee. He also serves on the Banking Committee and the Finance Committee, and he's also a former chairman of the Real Estate Committee, and he's a fellow realtor. Welcome, John Fry. Thank you all for coming up. It's nice to, uh, it's my 13th uh, well, Realtor Day as a legislator. I've attended many more before that. Um, and I was thinking the other way up. First of all, congratulations for surviving the industry. <laughs> you know, I'm driving up here today and I've got listing sheets on my dashboard. I've got an open house sign on my taxi. So I can totally relate. Um, how many of you made less money last year than you did two years previous? <laughs> Probably everybody, right? Um, so how many of you have changed the way you do things in your life? You know, maybe, I know like myself, you know, I used to have uh, True Green come and treat my lawn. I don't do that anymore. I used to have a guy cut the grass, probably going to cancel that this year. Um, I want to get a room painted. I've had to paint it myself rather than hire somebody out. Those kind of things. That's not the way state government operates. And it's one of the most yeah, frustrating I use. This building was built 20 years ago. It's still the newest legislative office building in the state of Connecticut. And it's, it's beautiful. If you look around, you've been here before. You take a look at the inlaid doors and you know all the features, special features of this building. Last year, the Committee of Legislative Management, who operates this building, uh, spent over two hundred thousand dollars on replacing the sign. You heard from Governor Malloy, and it's great that he attended uh, the real today at the Cap. I don't recall a Governor ever doing that. Going back, you have to go back a very long time to have a Governor come to real today. Um, and and as I said earlier, I think he's put together uh, what's an honest, a uh, relatively honest budget. Um, there are no more gimmicks available. There's no more rainy day fund. We can't borrow money. There's no more stimulus. Um, when it comes to being realtors, uh, when it's, let's say with Governor Moy, he talks about consolidating state agencies, and he's eliminating 30% of the state agencies. But the fact of the matter is we have 45,000 state employees. Um, the number could be higher, but that's what they're saying. At the end of his two-year budget, he's cutting 150. So when we're talking about consolidating 30% 30, 30 of the state agencies, or I think it's 30% of 30, I forget now, because I've heard both numbers. Uh, and it's consolidating the agencies. We're not eliminating, eliminating employees. So we're just moving things around. Um, you know, if you're, the unemployment in Connecticut now is about 9.1%. Um, if you're a state employee, uh, it's, you know, I think about, as a realtor, you know, what's going to help us in Connecticut you know, I think of the 100,000 jobs that we've lost, and the biggest problem we have in Canada is we've got 100,000 people who aren't paying income tax, we have 100,000 people who aren't spending money, they're not buying, a, they're not creating their homes, they can't afford a first home, they're renting, they're filing bankruptcy. I know as a legislator, I'm getting more calls today from people who need help who bought a home four years ago, they lost their job, and, and now they're behind. What kind of more foreclosure assistance is available to them? Um, you know, they're underwater, they can't sell their house. Um, their cobras run out. I go in and talk to the local dry cleaners, you know, house business, it sucks. Like every other business, why? Are people wearing a shirt an extra time? They washing them themselves? No, they don't have jobs to wear dress, you know, suits. I go to the shoe cobbler in my kid, Richfield. How's business, things busier? I'm thinking because people aren't buying shoes? No, it's lousy. People don't need to have their shoes polished, they don't have work to go to. So that's the big problem, and the answer isn't a new uh, Peppy's Pizza in Danbury or Dick's Sporting Goods. You know, we, more, we need more jobs like Boer Ingelheim and IBM and GE, and we're not attracting them right now. When you've got the, um, the head of Aetna a few a months ago um, said the taxes in Connecticut are getting so high and that they're comparable to New York City. If they're going to be as high as New York City, you just might as well be in New York City. And you've got the CEO of United Technology last June saying, anywhere but Connecticut. That should be terrifying to all of us, because we're not going to get out of this slump unless we rebuild those 100,000 jobs. Um, look, looking at, look at tolls, for instance. We've got something that David Zimmer has been championing on all of our behalf. We have an issue in Connecticut where we've got cars that are more efficient, number one, so they're using less gas. We have more hybrids and electric vehicles that don't use they use less gas or no gas. We've got people who aren't working, so they're not buying gas. Um, yet we have, you know, look at, it, look at the winter and what it did to our roads. 
Um, so tolls may be a solution. It's not one that I, I advocate, but it's one that people are looking at. It's one thing if you live in Rocky Hill and you work in Hampton and you want tolls on the borders. You know, because they're not going to pay it. It's like I drive an American car. Let's tax you know foreign cars or you know, let's tax millionaires. Somebody that's not me. Um, just think what putting tolls on just the borders, border towns would do. Just think what it's going to do to Mill Plain Road or George Washington Highway in Richfield or Richbury Road or you know whatever. Uh, it might, in fact, it's people in Newtown might say, look, you know, I don't want to have to pay a toll every day. I'm going to buy in Bruce or Southeast or Paul. So, and with that, I would say, you know, keep an open mind to you know, the bigger picture here, because as we make this state more financially stable, um, it's going to benefit all of us as we protect the rights of property owners, um, and hopefully, somewhere.